My name is Muz Hanifa. I'm a dermatologist and I practice dermatology in Newcastle. And I also do research in the laboratory trying to better understand skin diseases. And that happens in both Newcastle and at the Wellcome Sanger Institute. Skin inflammation is a very basic um, terminology. And essentially, it comes down to, you know, four sort of features that you see in the skin. Redness, swelling, heat and pain. And obviously, these are just um, symptoms and can be caused by multiple um, triggers and multiple processes, uh, which we have to understand. So there are many causes. So as I said, you know, skin inflammation is literally what happens uh, because you've got um, all of those um, four symptoms of the skin. And that can be due to multiple reasons. One is genetic predisposition. Uh, another is some sort of abnormal immune response, which can be triggered by either encounter with the environment or abnormal immune response to some of the proteins that are in your skin or in your body. And, you know, usually it's a combination of factors. Uh, and the fundamental thing that we need to do is to be able to work out precisely the diagnosis of what is causing skin inflammation in the many patients uh, that we see in clinic. So as a dermatologist, you are trained to see with your eye and to feel with your fingers a lot of the features that can help you to aid diagnosis of skin inflammation. And that can range from working out what are the features of an insect bite to what are the features of eczema, what are the features of psoriasis and many other rare diseases, also what are the features of skin cancer. Uh, in addition to using the naked eye, the dermatologist can also use another tool called the uh, dermatoscope, which gives you higher magnification. It's a bit like using a, 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 a mag magnification glass, magnifying glass, where you can actually see in more detail what's actually you know, happening in the skin. Uh, if you are still unable to make a diagnosis and if you're still unsure about the diagnosis, what you can do is take a small biopsy of the skin under local anesthetic, it's very mild uh, procedure, and that piece of skin can then be used and examined under the microscope to look at what are the changes and that helps us to tell whether these are changes that are associated with one particular disease or another. However, None of these kind of um, methods, including looking under the microscope, is sufficiently robust to actually say, uh, skip that, none of these methods uh, have the resolution to be very precise in giving us the diagnosis. They all help, and often the, the diagnosis of skin inflammation where things are not clear is where we incorporate information from what the patient's experiencing, what the dermatologist can see uh, when examining the skin and also what the skin biopsy looks like under the microscope which is assessed by a dermatopathologist. As I've mentioned before, it's actually very difficult even with the skin biopsy to be really confident, uh, particularly in diagnosing complex uh, causes of skin inflammation. Um, there are many technologies, particularly in 2022 uh, and in the last few years that we can take forward. Uh, quite a lot has come from basically genetic testing, particularly if there are predispositions to developing some types of skin inflammation. But what I'm really excited about is now the ability for us to take from the skin biopsy to be able to work out the gene expression profile of each and every cell in the skin and how they may be located and form the tissue. And that type of unprecedented resolution uh, can really give us a lot of insights and in fact, better understand some of the causes of um, you know, what we broadly categorize as eczema or broadly categorize as psoriasis, which may be due to different things. And we're only beginning to appreciate that there may be different causes to what you know, resembles an eczema rash or what resembles a psoriasis rash. Uh, and I think the um, analogy I'd like to give you is essentially, you know, if you were to imagine the skin as, a, as fruit salad in a salad bowl, uh, what we were able to do before is sort of like, you know, either look at the entire fruit salad in a bowl, 
uh, and and say what we think uh, is comprised, you know, is made, you know, what the what type of fruits may be in there, or at best take out fruits of different colors and then say that there's X number of green fruits and X number of you know orange fruits. But what we can do now is no longer use some of these very broad parameters or criteria, but actually take individual fruit pieces. So we know that you know this fruit salad is made up of six pieces of banana, nine pieces of strawberry and so on and so forth. And this gives us a census of the different types of cells, but also how the cells may be different and altered to normal skin or non-visional skin. And this type of analysis, particularly when you combine it with the information of which cell is next to which cell and what type of communication is ongoing uh, in mediating inflammation and in the resolution of inflammation after disease is just going to transform how we treat dermatological diseases, particularly skin inflammation. And I'm really excited to be going to Singapore at the uh, for the World Congress of Dermatology. It's such a fantastic country, uh, amazing people, extremely friendly, lots of great food. And I have to personally say I am from Malaysia originally. So this is very much, uh, you know, a bit like going to visit um, uh, family.